This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Jessica Luther from Alpena County Library. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Nancy. Nice to see you. You as well. And I know things are crazy busy at the library, and I know I think it's this Friday. We're going to be having Good Morning Alpena, yes. so I will definitely be there at 6.15 a.m. <laughs> yes, <laughs> bright and early. Well, I'm so excited because I'll get to see the, everything and how everything looks. Yes, it's very nice. It'll be all spick and span and ready for the chamber. <laughs> all right, excited. So what do you have going on? Um, so it is March, and we are very excited. Uh, we're going to be starting some in-person programming. Yay! So, yay. <laughs> so March is reading month, so story time with Miss Mary is starting up again. Um, so we have uh, sessions every Wednesday in March uh, from 9.30 to 10. 11 to 11.30, and 1 to 1.30. Um, it's for ages 2 to 5. Okay. We do ask that people register just so we're kind of keeping our numbers within a reasonable range. Sure. Um, masks are recommended but not required for the kids. Um, we are trying to, you know, keep our staff and patrons safe. Um, then the space is limited, but, you know, it'll be up in the large conference room like it used to be just so we can all spread out and socially distance. But, you know, Miss Mary's going to be retiring in a few months, oh, so this no. will be her last... Wow. Her last round of story time. So we are we are hoping everyone comes to see her. Oh, um, yes. Yep. We've got Miss Mary retiring, and then Judy, who is our amazing circulation desk staff person, who just can always find the right book for everybody to read. She's also retiring at the end of this oh. month, and we're going to be so sad to see both of them go. You it's are. just they're institutions. And yes. So we'll be, and we hope that everyone comes in just to say, you know, hello and thank you and yes, best of happy luck. Retirement. Yes, happy So exciting. Um, computer classes with Nancy are starting again uh, beginning March the 14th, and they are running weekly on Mondays. Okay. Uh, those are $5, um, and pre-registration is required for those. All the info on the classes, of course, is available on our website, or you okay. can just call the library and someone can help you with that. Um, also, our children's department is working on booking first, second, and third grade classrooms for um, virtual author visits. Um, so we've been doing these for a while. We, um, we started out with AMA, ESD, and we're kind of branching out. Um, but our next visit is March 15th with uh, Sam and Bobby White, and they're a father and son, um, and they created the viral I Can Be the ABC's Rap. Oh. Um, and their illustrator of the book is joining them as well. Um, so it's a really cool activity um, we just had one this week with 234 kids wow. in multiple classrooms across Alpena who got to talk to an author of the book and you know do some dances and learn about you know what what authors and illustrators do and it's just been a really awesome program and I'm really excited for what Sarah's done with that and you know I'm just hoping our reach keeps growing with that project oh, yes how wonderful yeah so and she's also working with um, a young adult author A.S. King um, and what she she is focusing on is intellectual freedom and how that impacts teenagers. Um, so that's on March the 19th, which is a Sunday from 1 to 2. Um, and the key components of that pro program will include, you know, what a banned book really is um, and why everyone's intellectual freedom is important and not just your intellectual freedom, everyone's is, um, and discussing the slippery slope of deciding for other people what they should and shouldn't read. Ah. Yeah. So, and also, you know, how to, you know, how do you address that and how do you fight, organize to fight against censorship? Um, and there'll be a Q and A session with the author um, and she'll be presenting via Zoom. However, people can come to the library and enjoy the session in person. Okay. Um, but they will be, registration again is required for this as well. Um, it's open to teens ages 12 to 18. Okay. Yeah. So we're, you know, that's very exciting. The, yes. teens are, the teens are really starting to get involved at the library. We have our teen advisory board who has a laundry list of amazing projects that they're going to start working on. Good. Um, and then for our adults, we have um, the adult book club this month is reading The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. Um, it's a Michigan notable book. It's um, been nationally renowned. It's, um, it takes place on Sugar Island in the UP, okay. and it's about a biracial Native American teen and how she uh, is dealing with her identity, but also dealing with the, um, 
the epidemic of methamphetamines within her population. Wow. Um, it's an amazing, it's a YA book, but it is an outstanding book. I've, I've read it twice. It's just fantastic. Well, I'm going to put that on yes. my list for sure. <laughs> um, so Tina will, of course, be heading that up. Um, and then we also, our special collections department and Nancy in together, have put together a virtual tour within the building. Ooh. Yeah, so we have, you know, some we have some historic art pieces, we have community art pieces that, you know, mean a lot. We've got the tiles in the children's area that the kids put together years ago. Um, so we have a tour within the library through our Easy Travel app, which you know, is the one that we do with our churches and things right. like that. And you just, you can scan the QR codes at different spots throughout the library and it tells you, you know, the history of that piece that you're looking at. We have a lovely portrait of George N. Fletcher on the second floor that, it, there's a story about that. It's just, it's really, really cool and lets people engage in a different level at the library. So, and then we've got, uh, just starting this week, we have Wi-Fi hotspots and Kindle fires for circulation. Ooh. So people can check those out. Uh, we received a grant from the um, Library Services and Technology Act program, which is facilitated through the Library of Michigan and the Institute for Museum and Library Services. So we're very excited. We have about 10 Wi-Fi hotspots available for checkout. Wow. Uh, the Kindle Fires are preloaded with library-related apps. So you can read your, you can use Overdrive or Libby on it. You can, you know, search the catalog. You can access Canopy. You can do all sorts of stuff on the Kindle Fires. So we're very excited about that. Yes. Um, we have lockers. The lockers are still available for anyone who doesn't isn't able to pick up their items during regular library hours, okay. or you know knows that they're going to be in a rush and just wants to grab their stuff. So, I encourage everyone to take advantage of that. Yes. Our friends at the library are busy planning for some fundraisers. We are crossing our fingers that they can have their book sale, um, but they are still le looking for board members. If anyone's interested, okay. I know you're retiring. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they meet every Wednesday, uh, every first Wednesday at 4:30. It's an hour-long meeting. It's a really good group of people, and they really work hard to advocate for the library. Um, so we have, yeah, that's what we have going on, and. You know, while I'm here, I do want to thank you for everything you've done for oh, us. Thank you. Um, we're going to miss you terribly. Well, I'll miss everyone too. <laughs> um, but I do hope you still come in and get your audiobooks. Well, and you know that I will. <laughs> yes, but uh, we appreciate all the advocacy you've done for us and all the other community organizations. And, well, thank and you. And you putting up with me for six years of me being embarrassed while I'm on the show. No. So thank you so much for everything you do, Nancy. No, and I'm so proud and happy to have been a part of all of the nonprofit groups and organizations in this community for 35 years. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'll be right back following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College. Uh, it's been a busy week at the college, and I thought I might uh, bring you up to, to speed on uh, three things that uh, we're, we're very uh, positive this week. Uh, first is, uh, for, for those of you folks who uh, drove down Johnson Street uh, Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, uh, you'll see some steel being erected. Uh, that is a very positive sign. That is uh, uh, the shell of our, uh, our, our upcoming lecture hall, the Fitz, Fitzpatrick Family Lecture Hall. I believe we're going to name it. Um, due to the very generous uh, donation and support of Tim and Sue Fitzpatrick. Um, the lecture hall will be something that uh, the community ha doesn't have, ACC doesn't have. It'll seat about 60, 55 to 60, um, with five of those seats being for folks who need special accommodations. Uh, it will have uh, some very high-end video and uh, uh, audio. Um, it would be a very nice spot for presentations uh, by outside groups, by internal groups like our Association for Lifelong Learners. Uh, we hope it's a point uh, of convergence for uh, bachelors of science and nursing degree, which we keenly would support and would like to be able to offer the folks of uh, Northeast Michigan. That is uh, really in the hands of the Michigan uh, legislature. To, uh, to either pass or not pass. But the lecture hall is going to happen. Um, it's going to turn out to be about a $1.7 million project, which will really put the uh, finishing touches on our uh, Van Laer Hall renovation project, which was completed in, the, in October, last October. 
uh, brought our nursing programs over from NRC, really upgraded the technology in the teaching space, and really upgraded uh, Van Laer Hall, the uh, center uh, commons in the, and the center of the building face overlooking the river is a very beautiful spot. Um, and then kind of the unsexy things, uh, new, totally new HVAC, um, windows, uh, wiring, um, it's made the building uh, in the 20, uh, now uh, suitable for 21st century work. But the lecture hall is going to, uh, is on its way, um, and uh, we're delighted to see it. And we think the community will, will really enjoy it when it's done and find a lot of use for it. Um, across the street, in the World Center for Concrete Technology, we had something called the Blockmakers class. Blockmakers is a partnership between uh, ACC, the WCCT, and Besser Company. And uh, these classes have been going on for more than 50 years. Um, and, um, you know, they're unique in the concrete masonry industry. Um, uh, students come from around the U.S. and around the world uh, for week-long seminars on uh, a range of topics, how to run a Besser block machine, uh, concrete mix design. This particular class this week uh, was electronic controls, which are the, is a very high-end um, electronics that run these large um, machines that make block or move product or cure block. All of this is done um, uh, primarily using uh, electronic controllers. So uh, 21 people uh, came from around the country um, and uh, they have been coming uh, since, uh, since fall. Um, which is a great relief to uh, everyone uh, for a number of years uh, from the Great Recession of about 2008, just slightly before that, really until, uh, until this year. Um, the blockmakers, uh, the number of trainees, the number of folks that uh, companies would send to training to Alpena uh, really, really diminished. And uh, you know, it, was hard for, it was hard for everyone. Um, and it was reflective of a, of a very struggling economy. Um, uh, manufacturing and construction are booming right now. Um, folks can't uh, find enough employees who are trained to, to uh, 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 you know, create uh, work. And, and, uh, um, and so these classes reflect that. And uh, great uh, uh, props to uh, Ron Gunderman, who's our point person, who's Besser's point person in the WCCT. Uh, the Besser folks, uh, Ryan Sushek and his team, uh, and our, our team, uh, Dawn Stone and Lisa Blumenthal, do a great job over there, and it's uh, wonderful to see that revive for those folks who have been uh, f uh, tuned in to the WCCT over the years. This is uh, as uh, sweet a spot as it's been in since the, since the building was built. So uh, we're very, very pleased with that. Um, last thing on the agenda is our Phi Theta Kappa uh, awards. Um, we have one student this year who uh, uh, will represent ACC down in Lansing on Sunday, this coming Sunday. Um, her name is Olivia Hemker, a wonderful student, uh, straight A student. Um, family is from Hale, I believe, uh, and has been involved with ACC in an in early college partnership uh, through uh, Tawas Area Schools. So Olivia has uh, um, not only great scholastically, she's a leader on campus. Um, uh, she's interestingly uh, become an advocate uh, for something that ACC and a number of colleges would like to see implemented, and that is athletic eligibility for 13th year early college students. 13th year meaning the year after they get out of high school. Technically speaking, they're not high school graduates yet. That's part of the program. So that's part of the legislation. It's not something ACC or the colleges control. Um, but it prevents them from being eligible to participate in, in community college athletics because technically speaking, they're not high school graduates yet. This seems um, unfair and, and um, kind of not... Uh, 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 not suitable to um, 
uh, the guidance of you have to be a high school graduate to participate in athletics makes some sense, but not as it's applied to this group of people. So she has become a point person uh, on trying to get that changed, and, uh, and she's done good work in terms of testi testimonials from a standpoint of a student who, is, who would like to participate in athletics. So that has ga gathered some traction uh, statewide and regionally, and we hope to see that p p perhaps change in the near future. This would be quite an accomplishment. So uh, Sunday we'll be down uh, honoring Olivia and all the other community colleges, the other 27, uh, 28 of us will be in Lansing at the, at the convention center there on Michigan Avenue and saluting these students and uh, they deserve saluting. So thank you all, uh, have a great week and uh, uh, we'll see you next, next time on Talk of the Town. This has been Talk of the Town with your host, Nancy Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.